So I think some interesting news out of this series so far is that no one has arised out of Europe just yet. I think that Rome is close. I think that Greece is close. But the European civs that are colonizing Central Asia, I don't think you can classify them as having potential power in the future because more than likely those cities that are far away from their base empire will fall to kind of a, a local civ. Someone like Russia, the Huns, uh, maybe Babylon, maybe Persia is, is going to eat up these cities if they continue to, to run out this way, especially Russia, Russia being the big one. Uh, Russia now really focusing on their colonization. I mean, I see, I think I count two settlers so far. Um, people need to watch it. Catherine is going to be powerful, and, and Catherine might be the force actually that invades Europe. I guess technically Russia is a European civ, so they might be the power that rises. But I, was, I think most people were thinking that something out of Western Europe or Greece was was going to appear looks like we're going to see a roman uh corsican corsica city is it corsican people from corsica maybe sardinia too there's another settler in there somewhere um rome also might be able to steal away the carthaginian capital if they are lucky which i don't think they will be because i don't see any melee units nearby uh, a few people piecing out with denmark Norway didn't actually try to attack Denmark. Oh, man, are they going to go across the Baltic Sea? That would be bad. Remember, Norway is at war with Denmark. That would be a, a terrible mistake for them to trek across the Baltic Sea and attack this Danish city. That would not be good, but, you know, we'll see. There's a little there's a conflict going on, so that's good. Distract Norway so they don't lose their entire military by, you know, I don't know, putting everybody in a bunch of, a bunch of ships. Yep, Portugal's going after Iceland, it looks like. Queen Victoria, you're going to get all this stuff taken, but I guess you don't even care. Queen Victoria does not mind. Uh, a few of the Ashanti boats now attacking a Moroccan coastal city. The Ashanti have a lot of options right now because they're at war with so many. You know what? Actually, they better be careful because Morocco is going to take another city away from them if they're not careful. I think I, I, think I said that. <laughs> if they're not careful, Morocco is going to take another city if they're not careful. Um... The Congo also, I think, has the potential of just rolling over everything to the west. If the Congo were to declare war on the Ashanti, that'd be very, very bad for the rest of the world. Because the Ashanti would probably fall very quickly, and the Congo are, are, are going to become, would become even more powerful. Uh, that would be a huge problem. Ooh, Ethiopia, that's pretty smart of them. Going after Madagascar. Yeah, that's a very smart decision. The Mughals still continue to build up, but they haven't decided to, to declare on Persia just yet, who I imagine that's the only one they're really trying to go for. Maybe Tibet, but Tibet is too far away, I think. Tibet, I think, is too far. Mongolia having, what, is this two? Yeah, two settlers, but they're still deciding on what to do with it. Remember the, oh, when did they take this? Oh, no, they settled that city. They settled that city. The Koreans are at war with Genghis Khan. So this city will get taken. I don't know if Shanghai will be taken. That's going to be a, a much tougher uh, city to acquire because obviously it's reinforced. Uh, it's pretty good defensive. China settled on a good defensive spot. There goes the Iroquois Canadian uh, peace deal. We've got the Congo building the the something. Uh, I'll go what? Something like that, right? Something. I can't remember off the top of my head what the actual word is. It's close. I'm close, but yeah. Anyways, Canada not doing so well, and America has, for the most part, rebuilt. So while the Iroquois were kind of slowly grinding away at the Canadian military, we could t definitely see Washington declare war once again on the North, attacking Leicester, and more than likely being very successful, taking maybe Kingston and Ottawa at the same time. Ottawa will be a hard city to take if you have to, you know, dodge this, this lake and go through the river, but it, it could be done. The thing is, though, it looks like Texas is on the verge of attacking Washington. We might be seeing kind of our own, kind of almost revolutionary uh, revolutionary war. Korea did take that Mongolian city, it looks like. Um, not revolutionary war, civil war. Except this time it's just between Texas and America. Just Texas. Texas was a part of the CSA, I think, so uh, I guess it's not that that crazy, right? I don't think so. Colombia still exists. Brazil still exists. But for how much longer? I, I don't know. Australia peacing out with Tibet. There's a lot of people that are... Oh, and Carthage. Yep, that's what happened. Texas declared war on Washington. The Sioux also built the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
that is, yeah, the Sioux. And uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yes, Carthage. Carthage's capital fell. And now everyone is going to go after this final Carthaginian city, maybe then going after Morocco. Who knows? They're still at war with Morocco. Uh, back in the east, which they need to be careful of, they're also still at war with Shanghai back in the east too, Timbuk uh, Timbuktu. This is this is good, but at the same time, it's going to be, yep, Corsica was settled, and I don't know where Rome is going to go with this one, but I guess they're going to find a spot. Did Portugal settle over here yet? No, I don't know what the heck they're doing. They're exploring, I guess. The Hun's also looking for a spot. Okay, so um, we need to look at we need to look at what Texas is going to do, because Texas is Texas is going to go after Chichen Itza, and Washington is is not reinforced at all. He is in the north. He's done a good job at defending New York. Maybe he was thinking about a war with Canada, but that's not going to happen anymore. And they need to be. They need to be careful. The Sioux also continuing to take... They're going to go after... I think it's Tamak, something like that. Tamak. Either way, uh, the Sioux are starting to snowball. And it actually might be for the best. I mean, either Texas or Washington needs to take up the sword. Because if not, nobody else is going to be able to, to stop them, I don't think. It needs to be Texas or Washington because Canada kind of lost their chance. The Iroquois, I think, ultimately are too weak. They're not in a very good spot to defend against the Sioux. The city is surrounded. I mean, it's that would for sure... Actually, you know, the Iroquois might end up surviving. I think they would be able to survive for a, a very long part in, into this campaign. But they'll lose this city. But I think they'll keep a hold of everything else just because the Great Lakes are very in a, in a good spot to protect them, I think. And Chitnitsa, Siege of Chitnitsa will begin very shortly. Shortly. Okay, uh, I want to see if... Yeah, the Ashanti are not going to hold anything back. They're going to try to now destroy Carthage. There might be a peace deal last second. Bam, another city was settled. Rome really just very aggressive with their late game settling. I think we will see a Sardinian city soon enough. Uh, I think that's safe to say. I mean, where else would they, would they settle? Also, look at Greece. Greece is gearing up for a war very soon. And Morocco, still continuing to take cities in the east. Ashanti needs to be careful. The Ashanti need to be very, very careful. Because if, they're, if this, you know, the, these two cities didn't really matter. They're both at one population. Ultimately, not going to do much. But if Morocco were to take over, you know, Khan, Khan Goa, Khan, Nan Go. There you go. I think Khan... Non go, kind of non go. Uh, if they were to take over this city, that's a ten population city. That that's going to be a much bigger loss to the empire than you know some of these you know one or two or three pop cities. So I think they need to maybe retreat. Uh, they need to. I mean, I know they probably really want to destroy Carthage here, but actually, I mean, every single city that Carthage had was a coastal city, which would really help out the Ashanti because the Ashanti. I think they do have that. They do possess the power of being sort of a, a naval dominant power, and at least the Atlantic. Because the Atlantic will be, I think, very... Well, it's going to be dominated by Europe, first of all, when it comes to naval powers. Uh, Washington actually has a lot of coastal cities, technically, too. It depends. Not much from South America, though. Not many coastal cities along South America. Chile and the Chinook are now friends. Well, let's keep an eye on that, what they decide to do. Oh, yep, they don't care. They are going to destroy Carthage, it looks like. Tibet and the Huns have pieced out Greece and Tibet. Oh, here's the other. Here's another Roman settler. So, yeah, that will probably be going for, I'm thinking, Sardinia. Because there's nothing left. There's nothing else left. Unless you want the Suez. But I don't know how you're going to protect that. I think we're gearing up. I think what I'm starting to see... When I kind of view around the map, oh, Babylon's going to settle along the western side of the Caspian Sea. That's smart. Uh, I'm really thinking that we're gearing up for a world war. It's still kind of early for technically a world war, but there are a lot of civs that haven't gone into conflict as of the last, like, 50 turns, 50 or maybe 75 turns. So I'm seeing big, big militaries. Very big militaries. And I, and I don't think that... I think that they're gearing up for a reason. The thing is that we need to get that. We need to find out what what's that domino effect. 
what war is going to begin this first world war. Usually you need one or two civs to go to war. They grind each other down enough where some of the other civs that haven't been at war for 50 or 60 turns then decide to go to war. And then from there, it's just chaos. Because, you know, those civs lose, you know, uh, units. I'm sorry, yeah, those civs lose units. And, you know, maybe further adjacent civs decide to declare war on them. And it's just kind of an ongoing effect. Usually in the late game, that's kind of how it works for a little bit. This would be kind of a middle... This is kind of a middle world war if it were to break out. I know the war is technically... The world's technically not like a global thing just yet. Not everybody knows everybody. But, uh, you know, it'd be like continental wars breaking out. The old world is still all connected to each other. Look at the Aztecs. Whoa. So the Aztecs are going to take San Antonio if they're not careful. I thought that they... Well, actually, I don't know. It could be open borders... It actually looks like it's open borders instead. I think the Aztecs might be trying to move up towards Shoshone lands. But uh, Texas needs to be careful. Because if Montezuma backstabs them, they are definitely caught with their pants down. Which I will say has happened to me many times in Civ. Has been captured by Rome. Oh, Rome sneak. Those those sneaky guys. The Rome, you sneaked in, didn't you? Yep, you, you snuck a melee boat over here and just swooped in. Well, that's good because that now gives Rome, well, it's good for Rome, I mean, that gives Rome a great access point to the Sahara Desert. There's a lot of copper around here, a lot of oases, oases, um, hills. No river, they, they, I mean, all the river desert spots have been taken, but still. Now I we'll have to see what the Ashanti do with this massive military. They'll probably, I think, uh, just go straight in for Morocco. Why not? They're still at war with Morocco. They need to watch this force here, though. Excuse me. Um, they still need to really watch this force. See, I'm thinking Greece. Greece is potentially gearing up for a war. I think that Greece war, well, Greek war, will probably be going after Vienna. Because Austria is not doing too well. Maybe Poland. But you don't really want to attack Poland right now. Not with the Great Wall there in place. That's going to keep them, I think, for the most part, pretty safe. It looks like Norway did, in fact, try a few times. Well, it looks like they're trying to go up and around to attack this Danish city. But I'm willing to bet they probably lost a unit or two due to embarking through the Baltic Sea and the city just bombarding them. Which is just a massive mistake. You don't don't really want to be making that mistake at this point here. Not at this point in the campaign. The, the, the Huns have really rebuilt pretty well. The Mughals, what are you doing? Maybe they aren't planning on going after Persia. I thought this army, this force, was being built for Persia because Persia, if you look at it, still they, don't, they still don't look that strong. Yep, that's what the Aztecs decided to do. They were moving through Texas so they could maybe swoop in on a Shoshone city. And there it is. bam -o. Okay, so what has happened? Um, those are, th that's, that's big. I think that, I don't want to say World War status, definitely not, but this could be the start of it. Um, that's what I figured. Yep. Oh, yeah, maybe it is. There's going to be a race for Austria, which more than likely... Uh, Greece will will win that race. And then a race for Byzantium. Russia also, I wouldn't be surprised if Russia gets involved in the war with Byzantium. Persia will be going after it, and I think they'll be, for the most part, pretty successful. Oh, bam. Spain and Rome now. Portugal also going after Spain. Bam. There you go. Like, uh, geez. This is not a, this is not a continental war, or this is not a world war, but definitely, I think, a European continental war. Because we've got most of uh, Southern Europe at war with itself. We'll see what France decides to do. If Rome or Portugal lose enough strength, then maybe France will go after somebody. But France, they don't really have a, a good military, do they? I don't think they do. At some point, I think it's only a matter of time before England eventually takes over Amsterdam. It all matters on when they do that, though. When does Queen Victoria and Great Britain actually begin the siege of Amsterdam? Because the faster they can acquire this big city in continental Europe, the faster that they can become more of a, a global power, I think. But uh, we've got a very interesting brewing European conflict. So there will be a big coalition against Byzantium too. Not really a big coalition, but we've got the Congo, the Persians. Also, I want to see if the Aztecs take over that uh, Shoshone city in Baja, California. 
So the war for Iberia is interesting. Especially if Rome can provide enough support. If Maria grabs Madrid, oh man, Portugal's going to be looking really good. I don't think we've ever seen Portugal with four cities before. They should actually have a, another one very soon, but they could also, Portugal's in a good spot to maybe colonize a few islands, potentially, out this way. Portugal is, is actually already out exploring the seas. So are the Congo, so are Denmark. I totally missed all the, the ships, I guess, that were out exploring. When did Ethiopia going after? I don't remember Ethiopia going after Mali. That must have... I don't know when that happens. Uh, Greece going after Songhai. They probably won't get the job done. Unless they send over a melee boat really quick. They're going to need to send that over very, very fast. Yeah, and uh, Portugal might be a good, a good power to maybe consider in Europe. Obviously, the fall of Vienna would be huge for Alexander if he can, if he's able to take it. That's also going to give him access to weaker sieves like Bismarck and potentially the Dutch uh, William from the Netherlands. So uh, that would obviously lead to uh, a lot more, I think, conquering. Okay, so boom, the Sioux finally pieced out the Shoshone, and they got pretty lucky. This is a big. That's kind of a big loss for the Sioux, not taking over these final three Shoshone cities. Oh man, the Essex are gonna have a lot of tough times. A lot of a lot of this is gonna be a bloody war for Baja California here. But still it would be pretty crucial for the Essex to pick this up. Chitnitsa still has not fallen yet. Those Minutemen are should be pr massively produced. I don't know why Washington doesn't have Minutemen all over the place. I think what are they like half the time to build, half the production cost? Half the uh, the gold to buy, something like that. I mean, it's pretty incredible, and they're they're the same strength as as re regular musket men. Uh, Poland, Ethiopia, Poland, and Germany. So that's just Ethiopia helping out Germany, and we will see. Oh wow, they took a they did take over the city. So this is the Europeans' time. This is it. This is what we're seeing right now. Is is Europe, and boom, there we go. Russia going after the Huns. This is Europe's, like, I think, this will be the final attempt for Europe to blob out, become more of a, a central focus of the globe, I think. Have a lasting impact, a lasting hold with some of these empires. This is going to be really important for Europe, because if, if we don't see big results out of this, then I don't think any particular sieve is going to come out of this continent as, like, maybe a, a global power. I don't think so. Besides Russia. Russia could lose this war and they'll still be fine because they've just got so much potential of settling. Yeah, so they'll definitely, I think, take over Attila's court. Maybe even another city. The Mughals are attacking Tibet. Yep, that's what's happening. This is interesting, though. The German... Oh, yeah, Persia will take this city over. The border gore will be less bad, I guess. It would be slightly less bad. But, yeah, the Poland-German war is kind of interesting because both... Empires don't really have the units to take over. I guess Poland looks a little bit better than Germany. Germany doesn't look that good. I mean, Novgorod desperately needs to do something here. Novgorod was put there to be a, a counterbalance to Catherine in the south, but, but Novgorod's not doing anything. Uh, by the way, I do want to mention, throw this out there, because there's a lot of people that are asking why I didn't include Finland. I didn't include Fli Finland because I have yet to come across a mod, a Finnish mod, that works with the TSL yet not another Earth, Earth map pack. There's like three fin Finnish mods. I think I've I think I've tried all three. I know for sure I've tried two out of the three, and it's extremely frustrating because, you know, I, I would love... I've tried from the very beginning to include a Finland, and, uh, and I haven't been able to do it. And it's like, I, I've, I just, it's like there's three Finnish mods, and I'm pretty sure all three don't work with yet, another, yet not another Earth map pack. I might be wrong about that. I might have only tricked two out of the three, um, or there could have been updates... Because it was a few months ago that I checked last. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's very frustrating. So that's why I use Novgrad here instead. But uh, if someone could show me a, you know, a Finnish mod that, that works with the uh, yet not another Earth map pack, then, of course, I, I will include them in next time. But, uh, anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.